Hello Little Gems and welcome back to the Little Gems of Baha channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Baha'i Fast. The fast is a very special time of the year for Baha'is, during which we do not eat or drink from sunrise to sunset. However, the significance of this period goes beyond the giving up of physical food, as explained by Abdul Baha. This physical fast is a symbol of the spiritual fast. The fast leadeth to the cleansing of the soul from all selfish desires, the acquisition of spiritual attributes, attraction to the breezes of the All-Merciful, and enkindlement with the fire of divine love. So you see, Abdul Baha tells us that the fast is more than just giving up food and water. It's a reminder for us to take this time to focus on perfecting our virtues and nourishing our souls by praying and meditating. During the fast, we have the opportunity to concentrate more on the food of the soul through prayers and meditation. May Maxwell, who is Ruhi Khanum's mom, and as I'm sure you remember, Ruhi Khanum is the wife of the guardian, Shoghi Effendi. So one day, May Maxwell was on her pilgrimage when she learned from the master that the food man eats is not so important as it affects our bodies for a short period of time. Because we get hungry, we eat, and a few hours later we're hungry again and we want to eat again. But the food of the spirit is the life to the soul, and it affects injure eternally. So when you nourish your soul, the effects of it stays imprinted on your soul forever. May Maxwell heard Abdul Baha tell the story of the hermit. If you like this story, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time we upload a story. Alright, let's get into the story. Bahala was traveling from one place to another with his followers, and he passed through a lonely country where at some little distance from the highway, a hermit lived alone in a cave. He was a holy man, and having heard that our Lord Baha'u'llah would pass that way, he watched eagerly as he approached. When the manifestation arrived at the spot, the hermit knelt down and kissed the dust before his feet and said to him, O oh my Lord, I am a poor man living alone in a cave nearby. But from now on, I shall consider myself the happiest of all the people, if thou would come for a moment to my cave and bless it by thy presence. Then Baha'u'llah told the man that he would come not for a moment, but for three days, and he bade his followers to cast their tents and wait for his return. The poor man was so overcome with joy and with gratitude that he was speechless and led the way in humble silence to his lowly dwelling in a rock. There the glorious one sat with him, talking to him and teaching him. And towards the evening, the man bethought himself that he had nothing to offer this great guest but some dry meat and some dark bread and water from the spring nearby. Not knowing what to do, he threw himself at the feet of his Lord and confessed his problem. Baha'u'llah confronted him and by a word told him to get the meat and bread and water. Then the Lord of the universe partook of this small feast with joy and fragrance as though it had been a banquet. And during the three days of his visit, they ate only this food, which seemed to the poor hermit the most delicious he had ever eaten. Baha'u'llah declared that he had never been more nobly entertained nor received greater hospitality and love. This, explained the master when he had finished the story, shows us how little we need when we're nourished by the love of God. So you see, little gems, even though the hermit didn't have much to offer, Baha'u'llah's teachings and words made him full with love of God, and his soul was so happy, even though he may not have had much in his belly. 
His nourished soul made him forget all about his lack of physical food. And that's what we should do when we're fasting. We need to immerse ourselves in the writings and fill ourselves up with the Word of God. Fasting is the cause of the elevation of one's spiritual station. This includes becoming aware of our behavior towards food and the material world that surrounds us. Also, it allows us to understand and sympathize with those that suffer from hunger on a daily basis and those who don't even have clean water to drink. The Master always exemplified compassion and taught us the importance of helping others with love and to be conscious of their suffering. The period of the fast allows us to understand better those friends that struggle every day for their own survival. It's true that we get to feel only a very small dose of their suffering, but we learn to be grateful that at the end of the day we have access to food, bringing to our awareness the importance for everyone to have the same right to have access to the food needed for the survival and development of our bodies. What is more, there is also a lesson we can learn from them, as their riches lay somewhere else, more in the spiritual realm than of the physical. Alright little gems, that is it for our story this week. Although you may be too young to fast with your families, but take this time to join them in prayer and readings from our faith because you're never too young to nourish your soul and elevate your station. I'll see you next time for our Noru story. Bye little gems.